Second Timothy chapter two at verse one. Ye therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What's grace mean? God's plan. Amen. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful. Faithful men or women who will be able to teach others. Faithful. Faith. People that are filled with faith, able to teach others or express to others everything that they've learned. Verse 3. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. This is called a faithful warrior. Everyone say faithful warrior. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. A soldier is a warrior to be found faithful. What is faithful? Someone that's loyal, trustworthy, reliable, unwavering, stable, consistent, and full of faith. Amen? He says, if you want to be a faithful warrior, you must be able to read, endure. You must be able to resist rejection. You must be able to fight according to the rules of the boundaries of righteousness. That's why he says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he doesn't, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the points of chain. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And this is a faithful saying. If we died with him, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Again, a soldier. What is a soldier? He's a warrior. He is to be a faithful warrior. He's to be found faithful. He's to be able to in, uh, endure. He's to be able to re resist rejection and fights according to the rules or the boundaries of righteousness. One of the things he says, do not entangle himself in the affairs of this life. That means avoid vanity. Avoid what? Vanity. The vanity of lust and desires. Avoid these things. Go to verse 21. A faithful warrior. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen? So what is the requirement? Maintain a high level of cleansing. To be considered by God as a faithful warrior. That way you're not beating the air for nothing. Amen. Verse 2. What does he tell us? He explains. He says, flee also youthful what? Lusts. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. In other words, number one, avoid the emotional drift. That's what he's saying. Avoid the what? Emotional drift. Number two, pursue righteousness, love, and peace. 
These are requirements. What? To maintain a high level of cleansing. So you can be considered as a faithful warrior. Pursue righteousness, love, and peace. Number three, associate with those in relationship with the Lord. In close relationship with the Lord. That are not compromisers. And their motives and their desires are pure. Because you'll know them by the desires of their heart, won't you? So associate with those who are in close relationship with the Lord. Not mouthers. There's a lot of them that say things. But their heart, you can tell by their desires and the things they do, their motives and their intents. They're not honest in everything. They have... So you want to associate with people with pure motives and desires. And again, avoid arguments that create strife or imaginations or images of corruption. Avoid these things. Look at this, verse 23, but avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not, was not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to what? Teach. Be patient. In humility. Correcting those who are in opposition of God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. Again, the first thing he's talking about, maintaining a high level of cleansing to be considered by God as a faithful warrior. Without constant cleanse, there is no sanctification. Does everybody get it? You cannot be sanctified with a, without a constant cleanse. Cleansing should be every day. By what? Avoiding emotional drift. Why? Because if you grab, if the emotional drift grabs hold of you, you go into darkness. Pursue righteousness, love, and peace. Number three, associate with those in relationship with the Lord that do not compromise and that their hearts are pure and their motives and desires are pure. Number four, avoid arguments that create strife or imagination or images of corruption. Number five, must be an example as a God pleaser, not a man pleaser. Teaching others by your choices. Does everybody understand that? Man, every choice you make determines where your heart's at. And number six, able to wait on the Lord with patience or what we call endurance. So many people cannot wait. They get pushed. When you don't know what to do, you do nothing. You wait. Even when you know what to do, unless God is sending you, you wait. Does everybody get it? People get put out of position all the time. There must be a high resistance, number seven, and finally, the high resistance to pride with self-denial and humility. These are requirements of the faithful warrior. The main thing is maintaining a high level of cleansing. We must be clean. That's why the Bible tells us to be careful what you're touching, what you're agreeing with. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 3. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud. Knowing nothing. But is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men, of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is means of gain. In other words, they use God. From such withdraw yourself. 
Now godliness without contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we're not going to take carry anything out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you men and women of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold, and lay hold of an eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Again, withdrawal from vanity. Seeking righteousness. There are many vanity seekers. Self-promoters. Survivalists. Busybodies. That are lovers of money and prideful. He said, withdraw from those things. Withdraw from that area. In Philippians 3, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Wow. <laughs> things that are lost. How many times have we lost something? <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to lose my keys every stinking day, you know what I'm saying? But I'll <laughs> lose my phone and my keys every day somewhere. Hallelujah. But this, he's talking about things that we've lost in our past that were so close to us or so meaningful or so precious. You know, most of us had to lose everything so that we can gain. But see, that's, that for some of us, it was a beginning of the event, but that event doesn't stop. It continues. It recycles to keep us cleansed. Things that we're still holding on. See, you and I do things every single day. He says, don't involve yourselves in the entanglements and affairs of this world as a warrior, a faithful soldier. Things of the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, associations, people, places, and things. All of these things that we find to be attached to. He's saying break loose of them. Things that were lost are entanglements in the affairs of the carnal living. So that we can gain the kingdom lifestyle of faith, righteousness. And a reality of a holy relationship, not superficial, real. Oh, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted as loss for Christ. Verse 8, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection. In the fellowship of his sufferings. Being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained it and I'm already perfected, but I press on. I do what? I press on. Not press back. <laughs> I press on. Wow. I love that. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are Awake, hello, that understand this, have this mind, have this way of thinking. So when you do lose things, you're still gaining. 
So many people are still in regret of things they've lost. Cut it loose. You can't change yesterday. You can't change anything before you even came in here. But you can cut loose of it because if you don't, it's going to change you. Therefore, let us have, have this way of thinking. And if anything you think otherwise, <laughs> I pray God will even reveal this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Again, things that we have lost. Listen, um, I, I can't express to you the area of the materialism and all the other things. It doesn't matter. And even today as we continue to, even after you're born again, and relationships and associations and, and people, places and things and, and material and goods. But look at you and I don't own anything. We're the stewards of his things and they're not ours. So don't regret anything in that arena. We may still regret choices that we've made. Amen. But don't let them affect you today because you can't change anything. You can't go back there and change that choice. Amen. You can't. It's impossible. But if we cut ourselves loose from that and maintain a high level of cleansing, we can become faithful warriors and know that everything that we do from now on is stored in heaven. Because we've spent so much of a lifetime trying to store things here. And people are still trying to build things according to their desires. Instead of allowing, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. So if God isn't telling you what to build and you're building something, then you're laboring in vain. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. We want to be known as faithful warriors. One who looks back cannot become a, can't be found faithful. And their warfare, now hear this. You know, I woke up this morning, and I saw in the spirit, faithful warrior. Okay, this is what you want to talk about. He didn't need to answer me. Okay, faithful warrior. I saw it in writing. Faithful warrior. Okay. And he said, this is what this one, he said, he who looks back cannot be found faithful. And their warfare is in vain. I was like, whoa. And their warfare is what? In vain. It's not counted. 1 Corinthians 4. See, he's given us the power to choose. But they're not making the right choice. Number one is they've not reached a high level of cleansing. When you reach a high level of cleansing, you're in a place of sanctification. Amen? When you're in that place of sanctification, God can move through you. We always ask God, use me, use me. He doesn't have to. He doesn't want to use you. He wants to move through you. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ are servants to what? What's Christ mean? The anointing. We are servants to the anointing. The anointing doesn't serve us. We serve the anointing. Remember, the anointing is what brings the desires. When you're in the sanctificated sanctification place, when you're in a high level of cleansing, the anointing has a, you, there's a difference. The anointing flows in you. You can sense, God doesn't have to speak, you know. Because his presence is an exchange there. You know. And in that knowing, there is a flow of God's presence. There's a flow of God's wisdom, understanding, discernment, 
there's a flow where you can see things differently. And it doesn't mean that uh, you're out there judging everything. Amen? Because now you're serving the anointing of God. And the anointing of God is bringing the desire for you to make right choices. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. So we men can sh we should be considered as servants to the anointing and stewards to the mysteries of God. Well, a faithful warrior is a servant to the anointing and a seeker of the things, and the things of God and his mysteries. Now, let me tell you what these mysteries are. His character. They're the mysteries of his character. And in this, it says, here it is, and moreover, it is required that a steward... Uh, in Stuart, that one be found what? Faithful, full of faith. Loyal, right? Trustworthy. Loyal, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, truthful, truthfully, brave, clean, and reverent. That's a Boy Scout. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to write that. <laughs> I still remember that when I was a Boy Scout. Isn't that incredible? That's when dues were 10, bu 10 cents. Ten cents for dues. Faithful warrior is a servant to the anointing and a seeker of the deep things of God and his mysteries of his character. They are able to discern God's time and counsel. See, there's counsel from God all the time to me and you. The Holy Spirit is the counselor. Amen? So God has given me and you counsel all the time. We have no excuse. We just allow emotions to make decisions and choices. Can all things work to the good? Yes, but it's a terrible thing to be successful in the wrong assignment. Verse 3, he said, but with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. I know nothing against myself, yet I am not so justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Why? Because he had a close, he's got a close relationship with the Lord. He's maintaining a high level of sanctification, amen, a high level of cleansing, which is sanctifying him. He is very sensitive to the presence and the impression of God. Everyone say the impression of God. This is what it's all about. The Holy Spirit impresses us all the time. That's what the, the word tells us about the still, small voice. That's called impression. We're impressed all the time. Psalm 15. A faithful warrior is close to the Lord. There's not a long-distance relationship. Verse 1, it says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill or your holy presence. These are the guidelines of a faithful warrior. Look at this. He said, he who walks uprightly. He who works righteousness. He who speaks the truth in his heart and doesn't try to manipulate himself, justify. Well, this is the choice. Well, this is what, this really, this is why I'm, well, here's my, no justifications. Where there's justification, there's guilt. Or should I say guilty? And speaks the truth in his heart. Verse 3. He who does not backbite with his tongue. Nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. But honors those who fear the Lord. How are you going to know if somebody fears the Lord? By their choices. Amen? You'll know them. Well, they truly fear the Lord by their choices. 
He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't, who doesn't what? Change, you know that they are stable. They're not unwavering. He who does not put out his money at usury or bribe, take a, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. He will maintain a level of cleansing, sanctification, relationship, and will be labeled by heaven as a faithful warrior. Second Corinthians 4, in verse 16, please. Therefore, do not what? Lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us. Say working for me. A far more exceedingly and a great eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. <laughs> Don't lose heart. Every affliction is working for us to exchange our old for the new. Hallelujah. You know, again, I even, even you know, everything that really happens to us 99.9% .9 of the time is brought on by ourselves. Amen? Sicknesses, all kinds of stuff, you know. You eat enough Twinkies, you become a Twinkie. You eat enough whatever, you become it. Whatever you partake, you, amen, whatever you eat, you become. So if you eat enough sugar... Because sugar is nothing but another drug of addiction. It just comes in another form. Amen? It's going to harm you. People get high blood pressure, um, uh, uh, diabetes. I mean, and then it, bring, and it go, goes, comes in the family line. It goes down to tradition because those spirits carry it. But, you know, every majority of the time, everything that we do it comes on ourselves, you know. That's that law of sowing or reaping. But everything can turn to the good when we truly repent and turn from those ways. Um, I, I'm an individual that um, I'll work till I drop or do whatever. I'll stay as long as I have to, even in the jail until I get thrown out. I'll stay wherever till I get thrown out. And uh, I, I don't, I don't, I ignore my body in the area of what it's trying to tell me sometimes. In fact, I'm a, I'm a believer that says, for this thing to get fed, it must work for it. If my body needs food, you better work for it. At, in other words, inside I walk around, work for food. You know? <laughs> so when I see people in the street, I'm thinking, well, it's... That's how I feel. Working for this body works for food. It's not going to get fed unless it does something worthy. So when I feel the pain, I ignore it. No. You're going to body. You're going to submit to the spirit. Well, it doesn't always work that way. And that's when harm comes. <laughs> so, anyways. I've been scolded and corrected, chastened, and paying the price. <laughs> but I'm by him stripes, I'm healed, no matter what. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> I'm turning from that way of living. <laughs> Amen. I will submit to some of those things. But not all of them, because you know your body lies. It's a crybaby. It whines. And it's always in want. Hallelujah. I can't wait to the day we can hang it up. It's like taking off the flesh, put it in the closet. Let's go. But until then, we have to sleep with this thing and everything else. We get so focused sometimes as, did I pray enough? Did I do this enough? Did I do that enough? See, when you're 
maintain a high level of cleanse? <laughs> You've done everything you're supposed to do. And God can move through you. Amen? Now, the Bible says lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It doesn't mean that they're going to get healed immediately. But there's a process of recovery because God is putting them in the line of position so that they can be healed. But he's going to bring them training so that they don't go back to the same thing again. Amen? Like some people need to change diet. Some people need to change this. Some people need to, So they're in the process of healing. When we were out there drugging and everything else and partying, well, we had some things to change. But you can't change on your own. It can only be done by the separation and sanctification unto God Almighty so that he can move through you. You know, so many times, oh, Lord, how I need to change. I want to change. Well, you need to die to yourself. The more you die to yourself, the more you change. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law is what? Is what? Perfect. Ooh. Con converting the what? Soul, what's your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your conscience, subconscious, attitude, mortal desire. You don't have to write that down either. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making one wise. Wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes and the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, the reverence, honor, and respect of the Lord is clean. It means cleansing, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, more to be desired than the gold. Yes, and much fine gold, sweeter than any honey and honeycomb. Moreover, by them you are warned, and keeping them there is what? Great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse. Cleanse me from secret, false, presumptuous. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, things that we assume. Well, I thought this, and I thought that. No, you assume that. And then people move on their assumptions and make choices on their assumptions. But God didn't send them to that. People make excuses by the word of assuming. Well, I assumed you figured this. Well, I assumed. No, man, you lied. You knew because the Holy Spirit told you. You just rejected it. Hello? Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins and let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be what? Blameless, mean cleansed. And I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and my, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Servant is warned. He's a warrior who is warned in keeping the boundaries. These are boundaries. There's great reward. Psalm 119, 9. How can a young man or person cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word? With my whole heart I have sought you. Here's a guideline again. It's a guideline of cleansing. With my whole heart I've sought you. Oh, let not let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as all in riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes and I will not forget your words. Woo! It's a guideline. Cleansing guideline. Proverbs 20 in verse 30.
blows that what? Hurt, cleanse away evil. Say it again. Blows that hurt, cleanse away evil. So has anybody ever been hurt? Emotionally hurt? It's a cleanse away evil. And do stripes, as do stripes, the inner depths of the heart. So the stripes are for the healing of the heart, he's saying here. But the hurts cleanse us so that it can become a healed heart. What, you know, when, how does cleansing happen? Well, you repent. Amen? The cleansing of the blood of Jesus and the washing of the word of God. So he's saying, that, you know what, there's times when you're going to get sideswiped. It's going to hurt. There's things, you, you're, you're going to be rejected. There's going to be something that happens that hurts you emotionally. Emotional hurt is probably the most painful. Even though we have physical pain, but emotional hurt, you, you can't just take something to move it away. Although people try to use drugs and alcohol and everything else, but it still just builds up. And then they talk about it even more when they're high. So, <laughs> Hello? They really talk about it. That, oh, rah, 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 you know, anyway. Then they get higher and then, oh, oh, oh. then it gets even worse. That's how you, people commit suicide. They, the enemy convinces them. Oh, man, you know, something happens. Go get high. Instead of running to the throne, they run to the phone and they're out back on the streets. Hallelujah. So sometimes, again, there's got to be something when. Listen, I don't, God allows things, but again, we bring everything on ourselves. Amen? So God watches. Oop, there they do it again. There you go. Oh, man, he's going to get hurt. I know it. But I'll be there to catch him. I'll be there to guide them. I'll be there to help them get healed. But we're going to go through the learning process now so we don't do it again. And again. And again. And again. So we... Stay, don't, don't stay in that stupid stupor. Amen? Blows that hurt, expose the rem and to remove evil alliances. Many times we have evil alliances and don't even know it. Things you agree with, emotional attachments, so forth. Uh, uh, so these, these blows that hurt, expose. So to remove uh, evil alliances of people, places, things. Emotions and idols. Psalm 31, 22. For I said in my haste, I am caught off before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried out to you. Every one of us has fallen in that place where it's like, where are you, Lord? Where are you? Man, I really need you right now. Where are you? And this is where, man, as soon as you say that the enemy comes from every area, you know that, right? But he said, nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplication when I cried out to you. You must know that he hears. No matter what the enemy says. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to answer you according to your request. But you know that he hears. Amen? Because he knows what's best. Lord, your will be done. Answer this. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. This is what I want, but your will be done. <laughs> okay. Yes, we become hypocritical in our own attitudes and motive and desire sometimes. Verse 23. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord does what? Preserves the faithful. And fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage and he'll strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Psalm 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I shall what not be moved 
See, again, in close relationship, you're setting the Lord before you, and every, everything you do, the Lord is here. But when you want to do something evil, you, like, shut the door like he doesn't see. Or you pull the curtain. <laughs> or you go into another room. <laughs> but he sees it all, knows it all. Nothing is hidden. And, of course, then we try to justify it. Oh, the door's shut by the wind. Or the devil made me do it, you know. Hallelujah. Verse 9, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. Why? Because he accepted the counsel of the Lord. My flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You shall show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the what? Good warfare, having faith and a good conscience which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck or I want to say emotional drift in our shipwreck of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, Alexander whom I delivered to Satan that they may learn not to blasphemy. Listen, those that reject are turned over to the tormentor. They're turned over by God. God will turn them over to the tormentor until they come to true repentance and choose to turn away. I think the word says something about those who labor without a joyful heart. God will turn over to a tormentor. And I'll close at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Therefore, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Why? Then there's for cleansing and sanctification. And don't touch what is unclean, and then I will receive you. I will draw near to you as you draw near to me. But if there's something in there that is not clean, he cannot draw near to you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises of God, Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of, of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear and reverence of God Almighty. This is a faithful warrior. Amen? Is a faithful warrior consistent? Amen. Got to be alert. The Bible says the devil's coming from every area, snares us every day, attempts to, sets traps. Well, you won't step in them. You won't be moved. A faithful warrior. Praise God. Remember, to be a faithful servant, you've got to be first a faithful warrior. Maintain your warfare. Maintain the level of cleansing. There were their sanctification. Maintain your closeness to the Lord. Acknowledge Him in all of your ways. Don't be worried about pleasing man. You please God and you'll have ple ple are pleasing with man. God first, God first, God first. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let what has been spoken be released in this prophetic moment of time so that we may walk in the fullness as a faithful warrior for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name. Anybody said amen?